Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Five on Friday, where I talk about my five favourite books of the week. Um, and this week I'm running a bit light, sorry, because uh, Brisbane, storm weather, it appears that if a storm is going to happen, it's going to happen right on school pickup time. And um, yeah, traffic was horrific. So I've literally driven in and uh, run upstairs and shoved my children in a room with a device while I talk about books. It's great. This is the way my life rolls. Anyway, I've got five really good books to talk to you about today. But first of all, I want to show you some um, super cute earrings that I got given uh, yesterday or the day before by Robert Henderson, who is the author of this book here. I see, I see, which I was lucky enough to launch last year at, um, well, gosh, where did I launch it? Avid Reader. Hello, Robert. I'm just talking about you. Get off. You'll stuff up my Facebook Live. Anyway, Robert um, came and dropped off these earrings the other day. And um, it's so funny because he dropped them off to school and I had to race back for a... Oh, I can't remember now if it was kindy or year two library lesson, but I, I decided I would read them this book and I didn't say anything about my earrings, but when I got to the page where these earrings are from, which is I see smile, I see frown, I kind of held them up here a little bit close to my ears and one of the kids went, Mrs. Taylor, your earrings match the book. And I was like, I know, thank you for noticing. It was really, really funny. And um, when I got home that afternoon, I, I didn't think any more about my earrings, but um, um uh, my youngest chickpea, she looked at me over dinner and she said, have you got I see I see earrings in your ears? I was like, yes, I do. So Robert, um, that's really interesting because that was like two kids that just noticed and recognised the earrings as as from the book. And how cool to have earrings that are actually from a book. So it's I see, well that one's I see frown and I see smile and I love them. I've had them in ever since um, Robert gave them to me the other day. So, you know, like maybe I should expect that now. Anytime I agree to launch a book, maybe I should expect to get earrings which are matching the book that would be cool um anyway i've talked about icic before so i won't talk about that one again although i do love it i've got five other books to talk to you about today this one is a new one by one of my all-time favorite storytellers in australia glenda millard it's called duck apple egg by glenda millard and martina Hinder, I'm not going to try. I'm so sorry, Martina. Um, Martina is German and I really should have rung my Belgian brother-in-law to get a pronunciation on this one. I did think about it um, and I just ran out of time today. I hate it when I can't pronounce people's names. Anyway, it's duck, apple, egg and it's beautiful. I just want to show you the front cover first. And when I'm doing five on Friday, excuse the post-it note with my notes on the back. When I'm doing five on Friday, I kind of guess I see it almost as a little bit of um, PD if any teachers are watching or also for parents to know maybe how to um, most effectively read a picture book because there's a lot of stuff in picture books which I think sometimes, unless it's pointed out to you, you don't necessarily uh, know about. So the visual literacy in this one is just beautiful and I love that when you open out the whole cover you get that lovely double page spread of the little person underneath the apple tree and the duck. And they are essentially all of the characters that are in the book. Duck, apple, and an egg. So it's really lovely. Gorgeous end papers. It was really cute when I read this one to my year twos the other day. <laughs> they said, oh, Mrs. Daly, good end papers. And I was like, oh, girls, I've taught you so well. All of my kids at school look at end papers now. Now, it's a beautiful book for um, reading through once on its own. I always, always read a picture book through just once without stopping because I think it's really important that you get the flow of the language and that you don't dissect the language and you don't dissect the book on a first reading, particularly with someone of the calibre of Glenda Millard. This is absolute poetry to read. I mean, it's just exquisite to read. It, it, I mean, it is basically a poem um, and you can read it without the illustrations um, and that's something that I would do on multiple re-readings. I would read this one uh, without the illustrations. I'd hold the illustrations down and just read out the text and on another reading I might just get the kids to tell the story using just the illustrations and not let them read the words. Um, so it's one of those books you can use in multiple ways but the first time I read a picture book I always just read it through the whole way through. I always make sure that I have a little look at the um, imprint page and talk to the kids about where the book was published. Um, lots of kids noticed a little ABC symbol and they said is it going to be on TV and I was like no ABC also produces books. 
Um, and the dedication from the illustrator is to my dear Olmuth, childhood accomplice and adult confidant. So we had quite a bit of a talk in year two about what accomplice meant and what confidant meant. And I love reading the dedications of, um, of in books because they're often really, really meaningful and gorgeous. So in this one we start, duck on the green, sun in the sky, egg in the nest, apple on the tree and me. Duck in the sky, sun in the nest, egg on the tree, apple on the green, and me. And so it goes on. It is basically about the absolute joy and simple pleasure of um, being in nature, being in your backyard or being in a field. Look at the joy on that little kid's face. I just love it. And it's just exquisite. You can see there's some adult legs up here fetching an apple from the tree. There's lots and lots and lots to look at, but just look at that joy. I love that there's a few double page spreads that are completely wordless that you can explore with the little people that you're reading it with. Um, I love the language in it. I love all the positional language. So after we read this one in year two, we did a bit of positional language play where after we'd finished library, we went down and had a look at our native bees and we stood next to our native bees and then we stood um, to the back of our native bees and then some of us stood on the native bees, not like on the native bees squashing them, but you can stand on the top of the hive. Um, so it's a good one for positional language. So this one is, you know, behind the tree or on the ground um, looking up, me on the green. It's a really, really, it's it's rich. It's rich in content. It's the sort of book that you could read over and over again at home or at school. I'm just going to pick up my post-it note I dropped. <laughs> I'm really professional on this Five on Friday. I think I do a really good job and probably deserve to be on TV. What else have I said? Ah, oh, the colours in the book. I love the colours in the book. I love that they are the colours of nature. We have got green, we have got red. In fact, there's lots and lots of different shades of green. I adore the colours. And I, it's a fairly um, simple colour palette. It doesn't deviate too much. And I really like that about it. There's a real calmness to the illustrations. So it's a nice one for um, talking about visual literacy and what colours might represent. Um, it's the sort of book that you could retell and dramatise. What else have I said? Said. Oh, and I think it would be a good one to do an innovation on. So you could choose some other words that are meaningful to you, either in your school, you might choose, I don't know, bag racks. Bag racks is all that comes to mind. Bag racks, grass, and I don't know, bees, um, and use those three words to retell a similar type of story about the joy of something, I don't know, in the schoolyard or your home. But I think it'd be a really good one to do an innovation on the text with. Really like it, um, visually gorgeous. So happy with it. Oh my gosh, speaking of visually gorgeous, oh, Paperboy by Danny Parker and Bethany McDonald. The subtitle is Paperboy, A Patchwork of Memories. And I just want to read you the blurb on the back. Oh my gosh, I've got a few post-it notes on this one. We are made of everything that has ever happened to us. And that is exactly what this exquisite text is about. Um, I just adore this book on so many levels. As many of you would know, my husband passed away two years ago. And although I now know um, that this is a story of um, a child's perspective on divorce or separation, I think really this is a book about um, anything that is a change in life circumstances for which a child needs to be um, resilient, I was going to say prepared for, you can't be prepared for divorce, separation or, or death on any level. Um, it's, it's a life experience that you go through, you didn't ask to go through and through that life experience you, you change, um, sometimes for the better, sometimes not, but we are all made up of all of the different things that have happened to us in life and um, this is a book that um, articulates that so beautifully. I'm not articulating it as beautifully as Danny Parker does. Um, it's just, it's about change and about growth and about being really okay and comfortable with the fact that everything that has ever happened to us in life makes us who we are. I am the person I am because of the experiences that I've been through, both horrific and beautiful, and I wouldn't be where I am without all of those experiences. And this book just celebrates that on so many levels. I just love it. Really beautiful end papers. 
the title paper boy gives you a clue um, as to the illustration style the illustration is all done as a paper collage and I suspect that some of the I thought initially that the print in the book there's quite a lot of um, print and I, I was going to say that it's newsprint but actually as I've had a look at it really closely I actually think it might be Danny Parker's original text um, because as you if you have a look at some of the text you kind of realize it is the text maybe it was his notes on the book I'm not sure but I don't think it's news newsprint I think it's maybe um, drafts of, of this story now um, the book is has is has very much got that idea of show don't tell the text is paired back and a lot of the story is told in the illustrations and the two just come together absolutely exquisitely i'll read you just a little bit of it we're moving house so precious things are wrapped up a glass heart and mum's china ballerina our photographs everything is ready for our new home but when we get there not everything is unpacked if I look really closely, I can see tiny cracks in some of our things. Maybe they've been there for a while. And, you know, I, as I said to you just before, I always read a text through in its entirety first. And I did read this text through in its entirety to year two. I didn't stop at all. I read the absolutely exquisite language. And at the end, we had a little bit of a discussion about it. And, you know, I wasn't sure what they would make of it. Um, but one little girl said to me straight away, um, it's about divorce. And I said, how do you know that, darling? And she said, because in the pictures, you can see that the mum and the dad are on separate beds and it talks about the separate houses. And then she said to me, in fact, it was another girl that said to me, and on that page there, Mrs. Daly, I can see two faces in the background. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. Actually, kind of can. Um, in the background, there's these two faces and you can see that they're fighting and it's the mum and the dad fighting. And this page says, tissues are good for tears and spills and mopping things up, but they are not strong enough for repairs. At which point I just kind of feel like crying because it is so true. Um, wow, I've been through a lot of tissues in the last few years and they are great. I love a tissue, particularly an aloe vera tissue. I don't know, Bethany McDonald, did you use aloe vera tissues for this um book because I feel like they're the superior quality ones I don't know about for collage but certainly for mopping up tears they're superior quality um, but they don't repair anything they don't fix anything do they they are great but they don't fix anything I love that line um, so I was absolutely astounded that several children in year two totally picked up on the fact that this was um, a story of divorce but really it's just a story of um, who we are and that everything that has happened to us every experience makes us who we are it's just the most beautiful text what have I said oh yeah there's been lots and lots of different paper styles used tissue card fly paper crepe paper um, all sorts of different things and at the end we see um, the little person in their house and the final line is it all fits so well together it's just oh my gosh this book is exquisite on so many levels and it's the kind of book that you're going to study in art in upper primary um even into high school this is the sort of book that so much could be done with what else have i said every word is perfectly choose chosen so don't tell um yeah and everything in this book is just leading to that idea that everything that happens to us in life might not be perfect and wonderful but it is what it is and it makes us who we are and i just think that's an incredible powerful message for everybody um, but could speak very deeply to children going through tough situations so yeah well done Danny Parker and Bethany McDonald one of my favorites it's also by a small press um, dirt lane press and they are doing some phenomenal phenomenal stuff and definitely I one to watch I'd like to point out that my watch has now rung nine times in the ten minutes I have been doing this and I'm just ignoring it all because I'm so professional, as I said earlier. Uh, next book I want to talk to you about is Derek Dool's Super Cool Buster Move by Adrian Beck and illustrated by Scott Edgar. Now, Adrian Beck will be known to many of you in the kid lit world. He's really well known and he does this fabulous podcast called The Kid Lit Club. Couldn't remember the name of it a second with Sally Rippon and I love it. It's probably my favourite podcast out there um, in, the, in that area. <coughs> and Scott Edgar... He's actually from the band Tripod, who I have loved for a very long time. I think I first saw them on like Rove back in the 90s. Do you remember Rove on channel like 10 or something? Ooh, gross. Um, but 
I've loved them forever. They're like a comedy kind of band. I don't really know how to describe them. Um, and then I remember seeing them on Rage in the early 2000s. And then they've been on um, Spicks and Specs. And they've been on shows with Adam Hills. So I love that um, Scott Edgar is also a children's book illustrator. That is brilliant. And, you know, I can kind of see some of the guys from Tripod making some of these moves that Derek Duell is making on the front cover here. Um, so Derek Duell is, I'll read you this back line. It's pretty good. Think of the coolest, funniest, most handsome kid in school. Times are by a gazillion, and you have Derek Dilbert Duel. At least he thinks so, and he's the only one. Now, you can see from the front cover, ooh, let me put it closer to you, Derek Duel is, you know, he's missing a front tooth. It looks like he's got a few pimples. He's got those skinny legs, got a bit of red hair happening, making a funny dance move. He thinks he's pretty cool. It's just that nobody else seems to know it yet. And this book is very much in the vein of sort of Wimpy Kid and Eric Vale, Epic Fail by another Australian, Michael Jared Bauer, and Timmy Failure and Weirdo. So if you've got kids that have absolutely loved those series, they will so, so enjoy this. What I really like about Adrian Beck's writing is that even though it's 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 funny and I don't know, some people would call it kind of, um, it's not toilet humour, but you know how some people say, oh, you know, it's one of the funny books. They would be so easy to write. Well, you know what? They're not. Comedy is incredibly hard to get right. Funny, humorous writing um, just falls flat unless it's done really well and is very sophisticated. And this is sophisticated writing. It is laugh out loud funny, but there's also a lot of... Um, I don't know, there's depth in this story. So Derek Duell is basically trying really hard to turn the school dance or disco into a, a dance-a-thon or a dance-off so that he can um, show off his cool moves. And it all goes pretty pear-shaped, but he learns a few things. He's got um, great friends. I really like his friends, Big Denise and, and Booger. And his arch enemy is um, Carmichael Cruz, which I think is a great name. And it's just got... It's got a lot of depth that you perhaps wouldn't see on first glance. Now, the reason I'm not showing you the illustrations, and this is dreadful, is that we were sent this book in um, uncorrected proof form, which is chickpeas, <coughs> excuse me, um, I've actually damaged my vocal cords. Like, actually, I have damaged my vocal cords. I'm not meant to be talking. Um, ah, funny that. Um, George, George loves getting nothing more than an uncorrected proof. What she does is she steals highlighters from my desk and she goes through them and finds mistakes. I swear she's going to be an editor when she's grown up. She did find a mistake on page three and she highlights. She loves it. She just gets so excited about an uncorrected proof and, um, you know, really, really enjoys kind of, um, you know, letting the whole world know that she has found some mistakes. Well, the weirdest thing happened the other day. The absolutely delightful Adrian Beck um, sent two copies of the final book to her because we were sent two copies of the uncorrected proof and her and our neighbour sat in my bed together finding mistakes. They were so excited. Um, and so he sent them copies of the, in the final book, which didn't have any mistakes, but he also sent a packet. <laughs> I just thought this was brilliant. He sent her a packet of highlighters and she lost her mind. Like she actually lost her mind. She was jumping around the library beside herself that someone sent her her own packet of highlighters. They've, they're all labelled now. She's made special labels for them and nobody's allowed to touch them and they have to stay in the packet. Um, so she was so, so excited about that. Uh, thank you very much, Adrian Beck. Um, so no, this is a, so I can't show you the illustrations because in fact, <coughs> there go those vocal cords again. Because, in fact, the illustrations in the book, while they are absolutely brilliant, um, in the uncorrected proof, they're not sort of the final illustrations. They're sort of roughs. But I also love that. I love, and I often show children at school the uncorrected proofs and I because I like to show that process of how a book is created and, and that idea of drafts. Um, but the illustrations are brilliant. They're very sort of Wimpy Kid style and um, Eric Vale, Epic Vale style. I really, really like them. This series is going to be incredibly popular at my school and it does finish on by saying that he'll be back for more adventures, um, as will Booger and Big Denise. So I really hope there's a second and third and fourth and fifth one of those coming really soon because they're going to be the sort of books that I'll buy in multiple copies for the library. Okay, my next book is What is a Refugee by Elise Gravel, and it is beautiful as well, but very, very different from the other books that I've shown you this afternoon. So Elise's style is very um, bold lines, thick lines, striking, simple colours. Uh, it starts, a refugee is a person just like you and me. Refugees had to flee their country because they were in danger. 
Some of them had to flee because their country was at war. Some had to leave because powerful people didn't like what they thought or said and wanted to hurt them. And so it goes on. This is a book that I would be really, really comfortable reading to quite a young age group, probably from maybe grade two or grade three. Um, younger if I was reading it to my own child at home and was happy to discuss those issues with them. This explains in incredibly simple but sophisticated language what a refugee is and how they have got to that position. It um, puts a very human face to refugees. Um, it humanises the whole what could I guess be a very... Um, disturbing subject to talk about with children, particularly if we're talking about uh, detention centres. Um, you know, I think the fact that the illustrations are very bold and striking and there's not a huge amount of detail takes away a little bit of the emotion, which is the right thing to do, um, but they're still very sophisticated. I love in this one that it doesn't talk about the UN necessarily, but you can see that there's a UN um, uh, name on, on this main tent here. So if you've got older children, you could talk about the role of the UN in helping refugees um, or people who are displaced. So this is a really clever book on many, many levels. As I said, I would use this with young children, but I would also use this with much older children um, and have them, I don't know, recreate their own story of, of something in, in of a really tough topic um, and making it more accessible for a younger audience because I actually think we need to be having these discussions more and more with a younger audience but of course it needs to be done in an age appropriate way so that nobody is scared. Um, and then she has obviously um, talked to and met some refugee kids while reading this, writing this book and she's interviewed some of them and here's what they have to say. And then she talks about some famous refugees, Albert Einstein, Bob Marley and Frank. It's just a fabulous book. And I also really like this very, very final um, picture here of just the suitcase with the label on it. It's a, an amazing book. It's, it's a bold statement, but it basically says that refugees are people exactly like you and I, and, and they've had to flee their home and that hasn't been easy for them. I think it's fantastic. I am buying this one not only for the library, but for home. And um, I'm probably going to be gifting this one this year. I think it's one of those books that's a must have. Really, really like it. And then my final book is Taking the Lead, How Jacinda Ardern Wowed the World. It's by David Hill and it's illustrated by Phoebe Morris. Now, they've done some more in this series, which you can see on the back there. This is a series from New Zealand and it reminds me very much of the um, narrative non-fiction series by Walker Books, the Nature Storybook series, and also the one by, I think, Penguin Random House, um, which is about famous Australians. Uh, title escapes me at the moment. Um, but I really, really love this one. And this is the first book that I have seen on Jacinda Ardern. And no doubt there's going to be many more, but I'm really happy with this one. Great end papers. I love a good end paper. There's bees all over it. I also love a good bee. Uh, love a bee book. And yeah, it is about her early life and growing up and how she um, was having her first driving lesson, but it wasn't an ordinary lesson because she's driving a tractor and this isn't an ordinary girl. She is already going places. One day she'll be New Zealand's Prime Minister. So it talks about her early life. It talks about how her family talks about school and what, the, what she hoped and dreamed she might be one day. It talks about her first foray working in a political office. It talks about her volunteer work. It talks about all of the travels that she has done and all the different people that she has met. And then we come to 2008 and she's 28 and she was elected to parliament as um, the country's youngest MP. And there we go into the story of how she became um, the Prime Minister. It also talks about her and meeting her partner, um, Clark Gayford, and um, some of the funny stories of their time together. <clears throat> it talks about all of the things that are important to her, uh, women's rights and um, being kind and climate change. So it really does give, I think, an incredibly good overview of everything that she stands for and her life. If you know nothing about Jacinda Ardern, this is the kind of book that, you know, if you've got five minutes to learn about her, 
dude, you've learnt it all here. Uh, it does touch on the fact that people um, said she couldn't be a new mother and Prime Minister and how she managed that. And here she is in the UN um, and, um, and the baby's there as well. It's fantastic. Talks about her home life. It really humanises her. Not that, I mean, the woman needs any humanising. I mean, she's utterly human, isn't she? Oh, my gosh. How many good things can we say about her? Oh, I feel like moving there. And then at the back, there's a timeline um, of all of her life achievements and significant times in her life. So this is an excellent, what I would call narrative nonfiction. It is um, a nonfiction book told as a narrative. And gosh, it's clever. I, again, I read this to a year two class. I love that it's in memory of Paddles, the first cat of New Zealand. I thought that was very cute. Um, this is just a fantastic book, really liked it. Now, I think that was all I had to tell you today. I feel like there's something else I was going to show you. I'm just looking around my kitchen to see what else there is I was going to tell you. I don't think there's anything. So now I'm just wasting time. Did anybody have any questions on there? Nope, and I can't even see them. Anyway, have a nice weekend, and I will be back again next Friday, I suppose, unless something drastic happens or I get a better offer or, you know, all of the things. I don't know. Maybe I won't do this again. It's my five on Friday. It's my Facebook. It's the reason I do this because it's mine and I can say and do whatever I want. I can brush my hair or not brush my hair. I'm working on the uh, Ipswich District Teach Librarian Book Week book at the moment and uh, we were working today all day um, <laughs> with Jenny Stubbs and Michelle and um, Mel and my hair is <laughs> so dirty that I said to them, oh, like I'm scratching my head all day. I don't have head lice. I'm just letting you know it's so filthy. I haven't washed it for nearly a week. Um, and it's really dirty because washing hair takes a long time and I don't like wasting time on things that seem useless to me. So, I don't know, maybe I'll wash my hair tonight. Seems like a good thing because it's actually quite itchy. Um, yeah. But see, I'm allowed to say that because this is my Facebook and you're just all here for the party. I'm going to stop before I say something really random. Have a good weekend.